This video will present a study on curriculum learning and training deep neural networks. This research paper was accepted into the ICML 2019 conference. We'll begin the presentation by explaining the difference between curriculum learning and standard stochastic gradient descent. In stochastic gradient descent, many batches are randomly sampled from the training set to feed into the classifier to update its weights at each training iteration. Contrastingly, curriculum learning organizes the mini batches according to uh, an ascending level of difficulty. So in this image on the slide, the green uh, like batch color denotes that these are easy samples and the red are hard. So if it's something like uh, intuitively, if you were teaching a child to add, you might start them off with problems like 1 plus 1 or 5 plus 0, which are generally easier than uh, additions such as 8 plus 8 or 9 plus 7. So in the paper, they categorize curriculum learning according to two functions. The scoring function used to rank the samples according to their difficulty, and then the pacing function used to determine how the samples are incremented during the training. So they use two different techniques for scoring functions, or ranking the difficulty of the samples. The first is transfer learning from a pre-trained network, such as the GoogleNet Inception network. They would take this pre-trained network, and then they would see which samples it has uh, poor classification scores for, and then use that to rank the difficulty of each sample in the training set. The other idea is bootstrapping, where you take scores from a pre-trained network with the same architecture as the network that you want to train the current model with curriculum learning on. So the key difference between these two scoring functions is that instead of using a pre-trained network that doesn't share the same parameters as the network to use with uh, the curriculum learning, you do use the exact same network to form the scores. So the other idea is pacing functions, and this is how you increment the harder examples into the training set. And it's parameterized by these parameters, step, step length, increase, and starting percent. And then they discuss these three functions of doing pacing. So the first one is fixed exponential scaling, defined by this function, which is where they start with a small percentage of the data and then exponentially increase it with a fixed number of iterations. So say you start with 10 and then you add 20 after 10 training iterations, then you add 40 after 10 iterations, and then you add maybe like 160 after 10 more iterations. Varied exponential pacing is the same idea, except for now the step-to-step uh, -step iterations is allowed to change, adding an additional hyperparameter to the pacing function. Single-step pacing is the simplest idea, where you just uh, originally sample from the easiest examples and then from the whole data as normal. So if you put it all together, this forms the curriculum learning algorithm, where you, instead of just randomly sample sampling, you organize the samples according to their difficulty, and then you increment how you introduce harder samples according to the pacing function. So another idea is you can either order them in ascending difficulty, or maybe you could test with ordering them in descending difficulty, the anti-curriculum method. They also show a baseline of scoring randomly, which is similar to SGD, but it's not quite the same still because of the pacing function component of the algorithm. So these are the results on the first case they test which is five subclasses from CIFAR 100. And they choose this uh, data set so they can compare their results with another paper on curriculum learning. And so the results from this study, it shows just a small improvement, like 1% accuracy improved by using the curriculum learning method compared to the standard stochastic gradient descent. The anti-curriculum method also seems to show uh, even 1% worse than standard SGD. And again, the anti-curriculum is just, instead of scoring them in ascending difficulty, you score them in descending difficulty. So even though the performance decreases, it's still interesting to see that there is a difference between ascending versus descending sorting with the uh, how you score and then introduce them to the model. So then these are the results from the CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 data sets. And it only shows a small improvement, nothing too spectacular, but it's still interesting that it does improve it at all. So this summarizes the results over the different uh, scoring and pacing functions found. So all the pacing functions and the scoring function discussed in this paper perform relatively the same, and they all seem to outperform, that well, they all do outperform stochastic gradient descent. The anti-sorting performs poorly, and then self-pace is another technique, which is instead of pre-training the network to get the scoring, you would do it like in an online way. So no, uh, another thing that they study is they hyperparameter search through the learning rates with respect to the pacing functions, because there's definitely an entanglement between the learning rate 
which is like this parameter that determines how much the neural network updates its weights at each trading iteration, and then how the samples are presented and the ordering of this. And then one other note is the class imbalance bias and forming the curriculum learning sets. So as they sample from the curriculum learning and they go from easy to hard, you want to make sure that the if it's a binary classification problem or even you know multi-class, you want to make sure the distribution of the class labels in the incremental sets are similar. Otherwise, you're going to introduce this class imbalance bias to the training. So thanks for watching this uh, presentation summarizing an interesting study on curriculum learning in deep neural networks. This is a really interesting idea, mainly because of how intuitive it is with human learning and the way that we learn new things. Thanks for watching this video again. The paper link is provided in the description. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.